Hey Mishka, welcome, welcome back to my channel. So in today's episode of Our Life Beginnings and Always, we are going to be continuing the wedding DLC. Last time we um mostly did the planning. It took so long. Um <laughs> there was so much that was like in it, so I tried to do like as much as I could. I didn't really understand most of it because I don't you know, I'm, I'm not a wedding planner. I don't know what you do in a wedding, you know. But, yeah, we left off here of leaving, um, out of all people, Baxter's office. Yes, we were reunited with Baxter after, like, oh my god. Like, it's been so long since we last seen him. It's just, it, it, it got me, honestly, it, my heart is probably for him. <laughs> I'm sorry, Cope and Derek. I don't know. It's so hard to choose between them. But yeah, everyone, before we get started, make sure to subscribe button and share this video with your friends so they can find about my amazing channel just like you have right now. So yeah, let's get into I hope you enjoy. So that went well. <laughs> before you could respond to a to the not exactly a question statement, Cove continued on with a new actual question. I mean, we got Baxter Ward as our planner somehow, but he seems good at what he does, right? He put his hands on the wheel and peeked at you through the reflection overhead mirror. Uh, yeah, he's amazing. He's absolutely the guy for the job. You're right. Cove had pulled out of the parking lot as he spoke. The wheels rumbled easily down the newly developed city streets of the area. But that was the end of Cove's attempt at conversation making. He went entirely quiet. The pensive look on his face didn't allow you to relax into a normal, comfortable silence. Cove, are you okay? His mood easily lifted back up at the sound of his name. Forgetting all the Baxter stuff, I'm just really happy we're doing this. Sometimes I still can't believe we're together. We're engaged and soon we're going to be married. It's incredible and it never stops feeling like that. I don't think I'll ever be used to it. Not really. <sighs> I feel the same way about it. His cheeks squashed at his eyes from the size of his grin. Nothing could stop him from looking forward to the upcoming uh, occasion. Finally, the lack of words felt right between the two of you. You took the chance to let the day sink in as best you could. After all the years you'd known Cove, you now were going to have a wedding with him. The scenery slipped by faster than your eyes could keep up with as you got further and further into your own thoughts. Then suddenly the day had ended and you were drifting off to sleep in Cove's arms. <laughs> it was early afternoon when you stepped outside, breathing in the good weather. The gentle breeze warmed your skin while you waited for Cove. He wasn't far behind, but there was still a serene moment to watch the puffy white clouds move across the sky. You were grateful for that because the second you both hopped into Cove's car, your brain was filled to the brim with wedding planning once again. Before you could progress any further, you need to cross one of the most important details off the list. Officially putting the wedding party together. This was the goal for today. Ooh, okay. Despite the nervous energy fluttering in your stomach, you were already anticipating the stops and phone calls planned. Peeking over at Cove, you hoped he was too. Are you doing alright, Mina? Oh, he has his sunglasses on! Oh. I have high hopes for today, and that's scary, but otherwise, I'm okay. What about you? Cove turned away while his eyebrows pinched together. His grip on the steering wheel tightened briefly before he made himself relax the stiffness in his pose. Tense but good. Better than good, really. I'm excited. Me too. Every time you imagine the conversations you'd have today, they all boiled down to the same feeling. Joy. The people you picked were all important figures in your lives, and you just couldn't wait to see how they take the news. Cove nodded and added a happy hum in response. And with that, you were on the road home. Naturally, Cove navig na oh my God. <laughs> navigated the car towards the old neighborhood. It was soothing, winding down the old, or the familiar paths of your childhood. You spent so many years expanding your world little by little on foot and then by car. The older you grew, the further you went. But there was always a place back there for you. Cove parked along the upper end of the street. Side by side, you headed out aiming for his dad's condo. Ah, your first visit for the day. Cove wanted to ask his father to be his best man and you'd be there for him. Ah, I can't wait. Oh my god. Cove's newly outstretched hand was halfway to the doorknob when he paused on char characteristically. Actually, I'm gonna knock. <laughs> I think he'll just be happy to see him no matter what. The warmth intensified in Cove's expression. His hand changed direction and he gave the door two firm knocks. 
It didn't take Mr. Holden long to answer. His initial shock quickly melted into a cheery grin. Come hey, come in, come in. His attention bounced back and forth between you and Cub as he moved aside to let you stroll on in. Hey, Dad, how are you? Great. Mr. Holden! Ah, I'm great, sport. Cool. Well, uh... Cub stopped bashfully staring down at his feet and rubbing the back of his neck. He knew just how important this was to him. He took a deep breath and didn't wilt under his dad's growing concern. So, Mina and I were talking about the wedding, and I realized that I need to ask you about something. I'm all ears, son. Whatever you need, I'm your guy. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Kind of swallowed nervously and nodded, then the corners of his mouth started to perk up. I was wondering if you might be alright being my best man in the wedding party. <laughs> Mr. Holland slammed a hand to his chest, clutching his heart. He waited for any sign... For any kind of sign of life, a party wasn't sure if he was even breathing until he finally gaps in a lung full of air. That's mini cope, honestly. So many moments he's done that where he's like just standing still and stuff. Actually, I think he did that when they both kissed for the first time, didn't he? I think I think. Cove, you don't have to do that. Cove's brows bent up, but his delicate smile grew wider. Nobody's forcing me. This is what I want. Aww. This is me. Dad, you've always supported me through the good and the bad. For my whole life, you've taken care of me. His expression was earnest as he stepped forward. Your chest swelled with pride, listening to Cove's honest plea. Why would I want somebody else to be my best man? Oh my god, this is me. Ah! Completely touched, Mr. Hoan grabs his son by the shoulders and then wrapped him in a hug. Cove embraced him just as tightly and rested a cheek on his dad. There's nothing in this world that would stop me from being there for my boy. Thanks, Dad. Sniffling, Cove's voice came out softly and laid in with emotion. With teary eyes, Mr. Holm invitedly reached an arm out to you. Aw, let's join them. That simple invitation instantly had your vision clouded with tears. The Holdens felt like family to you, and right now, it really settled in how much all of you were now, without question, family. Including Ford, you let yourself be pulled into their loving embrace. You clung onto them both. Finally, Mr. Holm pulled back, letting his shaking form settle again. Well, I'm sure you're both busy, so I won't keep you. Mr. Holm crossed his arms. Despite the misty eyes, he beamed in taking, taking in the sight of you and Cove. But I really appreciate you coming by, and I'm around, and I'm around if either you ever need anything. Thanks, and yeah, we need to invite the rest of the wedding party before we see the wedding planner later. You were our very first stop today. Oh, Mr. Holm managed to brighten even more hearing that. Cove shyly nodded and rubbed his arm. Very good. You're being so responsible. I won't hold you up on your way. Um, or, pff, oh my god. Thanks, um, again. <laughs> I guess we're on to the next stop. You glanced over at Cove. He nodded cheerily, and you felt a calming surge of confidence. Have fun spreading the good news. <laughs> we will. Bye, Dad. See you soon. Bye, Mr. Holden. The sun was warm on your skin as you left Mr. Holden's house. Stretching your arms overhead, you pivoted to Cove, feeling refreshed. Ready? Yep, let's go. You moved your attention to your mom's place right in front of both of you. You pointed at the house. We're already here. Stepping up to the condo, you rang the doorbell and waited. The longer you stood there, the stranger you felt. Because it still felt like your own door. The expression on your face pinched together oddly, but it was short-lived as your ma swung the door open and validated your thoughts. Hello. Oh, sweeties. Welcome home. <laughs> Hi, Nalani. She eagerly ushered you both inside towards the living room. Ma then went over to the hall and cupped a hand to the side of her mouth to be heard in the other room. Pam, come see our di- Oh my god, come see our guests. Mom curiously peeked out the bedroom door. When she realized who it was, she beamed and gave you a little wave. Hey kiddos, <laughs> hi. Hi, I missed you both. Your mom's expression softened. Mom joined you all in the living room, standing alongside Ma. What can we do for you today? We've been working on some wedding preparations, and we were hoping to include you in that. I wonder what that could mean. Ma raised an amused eyebrow and then turned to Mom. Shirley Cope glanced at you, wordlessly asking for you to take the lead here. Mm. Um, Mom and Ma, would either of you want to be part of our wedding? Cove and I were hoping that Mom would be a bridesmaid, and Ma would also be a bridesmaid for me. Of course! Ma excitedly looked from you to mom and then back again. She was thrilled. If you want me as a bridesmaid, then I will be. All I want is to be there for my wonderful child's very special day. Aww. 
Long to step forward and put her hand on her hip, she beamed proudly. You bet, Mina, whatever you need, because out of all my kids, you're tied for first place! <laughs> oh my god! Okay, bye, Liz! <laughs> Oh my god, hanging your head, you buried your face in your hands. Mom turtled, extremely pleased with her own joke. <laughs> oh my god. Teasing aside, Mia, you've made me very happy. A small relief sigh took away the remaining worries twisting in your gut. That went even better than you thought it would. A silly sweet grin spread ear to ear on Mom as she swayed gently where she stood. She peeked at Ma. I can't believe it. I'm in the same party as Nolani. That's so exciting. Oh, hello, miss. It's so nice to see you here. How long have you been at this lovely party? Ma placed a hand over her heart as she spoke. They both had pink cheeks from laughter, pretending they're hanging out with each other at an actual event. Everything was so much sweeter knowing that your moms were thoroughly enjoying this. Spying on the cove out of the corner of your eye, you caught the fondness he exuded uh, watching you in return. He seemed just as pleased with your mom's reactions. Uh, okay, well, we'll let the two of you go about the rest of your planning. Thank you so much for surprising us with this. Ma brushed her, brushed her back her hair, observing you both affectionately. Mom nodded in agreement. You've got a lot to do, but I'm sure you'll be able to hack it. Oh, we will. Just prepare yourselves for the best wedding you've ever seen. We're waiting for it, right, Lonnie? Yes, we're expecting nothing but great things. Thank you, too. We'll see you soon. Yeah, yeah we appreciate it so much. The tips of Cove's ears were red, but he did his best to be unruffled under your mom's stairs. He nodded with a warm smile. Bye. Goodbye. See you around. No! Bye! No! <laughs> that was so nice. After that, your mom's walked you to the door. You and Cove stepped out into the neighborhood, ready to tackle the next task on your to-do list. With one last glance around the neighborhood, you silently said goodbye. There was so much more to do today, and that would require hitting the road again. Humming to yourself, you watched Cove bring the car towards the city. Your next visit would be a meet-up with Terry and Miranda in their neck of the woods. You couldn't wait. You did tell them in advance that the wedding planning was bringing you and Cove out that way, so your, plan so your friends were expecting you today. But as far as you knew, they didn't have any idea what you were preparing to ask. Pulling into the parking lot along the street, Cove was in high spirits. He eagerly hopped out of the car and you caught up to him with light steps. You weren't that far away from the car when you heard familiar friendly shouts nearby. You spotted Terry and Miranda running along the brick path to meet you and Cove halfway. Hey buddies. Oh, hey buddies. Ah, ah, it's so good to see you. Hey, long time to see. You and Cove hurried over to meet up with them. He waved widely. Hey, thanks for coming down. Me and I have something to talk to you about, and it's really nice to be able to do it in person. Neither of them dared to interrupt, but Terry and Miranda did share a silent look. They both seemed eager to know the details. Terry, could you be a groomsman in my wedding party? Yes, I made the cut. <laughs> thrilled, he, thrilled, he threw a satisfied fist in the air. Terry's grin stretched ear to ear. You laughed. You were generally... Jen and, oh my god, genuinely relieved by Terry's reaction. Why are y'all worried they'll say no? I think one would love to be like a bridesmaid. Oh my god, having second thoughts already? No? Good. <laughs> I'm a groomsman and you can't take it back. It's set in stone. We could take it back. No! <laughs> Cove's nigger leaning towards you. And then Cove's attention moved to Randy. You watched her eagerly in, in anticipation. Miranda, it could be, it'd be great if you could be a groomswoman in my party. Her eyes darted from Cove to you to Terry and then back to Cove again before she believed that this was really all happening. Thanks. Yeah, except thank you so much. That would be wonderful. Terry cheered again, pulling Miranda in for a one arm side hug. Cove put a hand to his chest and let out a small sigh of relief. Go Team Cove! <laughs> yeah, Team Cove forever! Hey, Mina's party is just as good. I married Mina, remember? We like her. Go team Mina! <laughs> you cheered your- You truly moved your hand like you were waving a flag. That got a hearty laugh out of both Terry and Miranda. Team Mina and Cove's wedding forever. <laughs> Terry put his hands on his hip and nodded sagely. That's the truth, Randy. Seriously, thanks for this. Yeah, it's super nice to be- To include us in the wedding parties. Of course. We couldn't imagine the wedding a- Oh my god. We couldn't imagine the wedding any other way. Thanks for meeting up with us today. 
It's nothing, but you'll probably have to get going now, huh? Yeah, we have a meeting with the wedding planner pretty soon. The Bax man. Oh, <gasps> with a curt shake of the head, Cove rolled his eyes, completely unamused. Miranda's brow for her own. Wait, I thought you were joking when you mentioned that. Is he really planning your wedding? He is. Wow. Oh, wow. I remember when we were all here watching free range fireworks, and now you two are getting married, and Baxter is the one planning it. Preposterous. <laughs> it's definitely something, but that's what we're doing, and we're now, and we're gonna go do it now. Kov awkwardly rubbed his arm, understanding Terry gave a thumbs up. Safe travels. Bye, have fun. Thanks again, we'll see you both soon. I don't know if it's just me, but why does no one like Baxter? Is it cause like we used to hang out with him and we just haven't seen him in a long time? Or he used to like, like Mina, like us, the main character. <laughs> Terry and Miranda remained on the walkway while you and Cooper returned to the car. When you were alone again, you spoke up. That was good. Yeah. He wasn't facing you, but you could still admire the happy curve of his lips. It was nice to visit with your friends for a little while. And it was even better to have another thing set up for the big day. With a determined stare, Cove pulled, out his, pulled his phone out and plugged Baxter's office into the GPS map. Once it was all set, he put the car in drive and you were both on your way once more. While Cove drove, you pulled, out your, you pulled your phone out and scrolled through your contacts list. The rest of this task would have to be done long distance, so you turned the speaker up and made the call. Dialing up your big sister, you set the phone to speaker. You were already expecting the inevitable joke she'd had up her non-sleeves. <laughs> Hello, Mina. What do you need to inform me of? <laughs> hi, T2 Liz. Oh, hi, Cove. This is going to be good. Liz and Liz's intrigued tone became teasing, realizing she was on speaker. I guess you can't even pretend to have a normal conversation first. No. You're planning a wedding. You have to have something in the works by now. You could tell by the way Cove quietly took a deep breath that he was conflicted. In your gut, you knew he went to admonish her and shake his head, but she wouldn't see that. Um, she's right, Cove. Cove exhaled loud enough for Liz to hear. You could easily imagine the utter delight on her face. And Cove and I were hoping that you'd be a bridesmaid for me. I knew it. I, the only reason you both would be calling like this would be asked something like that. Yeah, yeah, you're very clever for cracking the case. That's correct. It, it makes sense. And of course, he requests me to be involved with the wedding. Liz cropped up over the line. She needed some time to collect herself. But when she did, she spoke much more earnestly this time. But that aside, honestly, I'd love to be your bridesmaid. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. No, thank you. This means a lot to me. Me too, little sister. Oh, I love their relationship. It's so sweet. I'm glad you're going to be a part of this too, Liz. It's natural that you would be. You've been there all along, for better and worse. Rude but fair. I'm looking forward to it. Cool, we gotta go and do more wedding things. Talk to you later. Keep me updated. Bye. Bye, Liz. Ah, that's the... Oh my god. And with that, you could happily check another box off your to-do list. That was another invitation set and accepted. Taking a deep breath, you pulled up the contact for the next person on your mind. You hit the call button and waited. Eagerly, you waited for your cousin to pick up. Cove noticed out of the corner of his eye that you positioned the phone a little further away than normal. He nodded in agreement with that decision. Hi. Hey, Mina. How's the wedding plan going? Any news? Here we go. <laughs> Despite his amused tone, Cove still held the wheel more tightly, bracing for the volume of the calming, coming conversation. Lee was clearly already excited for any potential scoop. Oh, was that Cove? Hi! Hi, Lee. She uncuriously remained silent after the greetings, waiting patiently for what this was about. Hey, Lee, can I ask you something? Mm-hmm. Will you be a bridesmaid in my wedding party? Ah! <laughs> Chuckling, you could feel Cove's affectionate gaze on your skin. It was easy for you both to imagine the way Lee must have been vibrating with wedding energy as she let her enthusiasm spill out loudly over the phone. Lee's cheering was exactly what you wanted to hear. Eventually, she called an end to her mini celebration when she was forced to pause to take a deep breath. I think it's safe to say that was a yes. It sounded like one to me, too. Totally, yes, I'm in. You know I am. Yes. <laughs> I'm still just stunned about everything. My cousin is getting married. This is going to be so amazing. Thank you, Lee. We appreciate the support. That's what family is for. I'm always just a phone call away. Thanks, Lee. We have some more wedding-related things to do, so we'll pick up pick this up again later works for me good luck with the planning and i expect a detailed report face to face soon <laughs> of course bye lee bye mina bye i'm still here i never get i 
Oh my god, I can't talk. <laughs> I never forget you, bye. Energize, you hung up already awaiting the next time you see Lee in person. Stretching your arms out, you pleasantly took in the world, rolling by out the window. <laughs> Taking a deep breath, you pulled out the contact for the next person on your mind. You hit the call button and waited. Oh my god, Kira, oh my god. Oh my god, Kira, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. If, okay, little spoiler, Kira is the one I wanted to be the maid of honor. <laughs> Because if you have been watching my channel for such a long time, like beginning, beginning, and like, you know, somewhere around maybe step two, I had such a love for Kira, or I still have it, but she, I'm telling you, she's an undoubtedly one of my favorite people, if not the most like favorite. I don't know why, I became really attached to Kira. Maybe it's because it's Cobe's mom or maybe just her energy and her personality I really like but yeah <laughs> I love Kira so I just had I had to okay I would have picked Lee but um I didn't think uh, I don't know I thought it'd be kind of different maybe to do it also but I mean I love Kira I couldn't oh my god I didn't want to have any regrets but if it wasn't Kira it would have been Lee so yeah Oop. Okay, I just messed with everything. Staring at Kira's name, you hoped that she wasn't too busy. She luckily picked up only after a couple rings. <gasps> Kira, hello man, hello baby. Hi mom three. <laughs> I forgot we called her that. Hi mom, how'd you know I was here? When are you ever far from Mina, especially with what's been happening lately? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. How are my best kids doing? Good, really good. Um, me and I actually have something that we wanted to ask you. Oh, I'm on ears. Cove left it open for you to ask. Oh my god. Well, I was wondering, will you be my maid of honor? <gasps> ah! <laughs> what? Mina, you want me as your maid of honor? Yep, that's right. You've made, you've had such a big impact on my life. And I'm grateful to you that you've always been so supportive. This would mean so much to make you be my maid of honor. Ah! Oh my heart. Kira, you can count on me. Thanks, mom. Yeah, thank you so much. That's what I'm here for. We have to keep going for more planning, but we'll talk to you later, okay? Good luck, my babies, and take care. I'll see you both again soon. Thanks again. Bye. Bye, mom. Oh my god. Yay! <laughs> Oh my goodness. Cove was elated, uh, ela elated when you ended the call. One more successful invitation was checked off the to-do to list. Oh my god. Can't talk. Oh no, are we gonna ask Jeremy? <laughs> Taking a deep breath, you pulled up the contact for the next person on your mind. You hit the call button and waited. Oh my god, Derek! You didn't have to hover over Derek's name. You hit call without another thought. He picked up before the second ring. Hey, it's Derek. How's, how's it going? Hi, everything's great. Hey, Cobes there too. <laughs> Talking to Derek always raises spirits. You chuckled watching Cobes grin widen. Hey too, and Cobes right. Things are good. Awesome. Did you both need to talk to me about something specific or is this just for fun? Yeah, about that. I was wondering if you want to be a groomsman for me. Oh, hell yeah. Of course I'd want to be in your party. Dude, I, I'll be there to catch you with your fate. It's going to be an, an intense emotional day. Cove let out a deep sigh that morphed into a stuttering laugh. His cheeks burned a deep red. You all knew well enough that there was a high possibility that situation happening during your wedding. <laughs> uh, that's, ex that's exactly what your job is. I'm so glad we're on the same page here. Haha, <laughs> thanks. Don't worry about it, thanks. I things? Don't worry about a thing. I got this. I'm here for whatever you need. You can hear Derek snickering again over the line, but he soon settled down. Your cheeks were starting to hurt from smiling so much. Seriously, uh, congrats again, you two. It means a lot to me that I'll get to be there with you through this. Thanks for being there, Derek. We can't thank you enough, Derek. 
You were pretty sure that you would not come speechless. All you could do hear of the line were some sniffles. Oh, you f you both felt fortunate to have such a good friend in Derek. Cove glanced at you with, with eyes full of this. Oh my God, full of affection before moving things along. So that's what we were calling about. And now there's even more wedding plan to get to. Well, I won't keep you. I'm glad you called. See you later. Yeah, you will. Bye. Bye, Derek. Bye. Landing back in your chair, you finally put your phone away and slid your attention towards Cove with an easy smile. The high excitement was fading and leaving a comfortable tiredness in its place, but you wouldn't trade the joy and support you got today for anything. Cove gave a little cheer of your mutual success. We did it! We have wedding parties! Cove didn't take his focus off of the road, but you could hear every bit of relief in his voice. The corner of his mouth curved. Oh my god, y'all! I cannot wait till we go pick out our, our dress! Oh my god, I cannot wait! I can't wait! To do the the bridesmaids dresses and our dress oh my god we're gonna be so pretty i mean i guess it's not exactly surprising that things went fine but it's hard to act casual about any of this you put a reassuring hand on his shoulder cove stole a quick glance at you sweetly you didn't have to say a single word because you both knew how much you shared his sentiment this was a big and exciting deal and you couldn't be happier to have cove to share this with the tension in his body slipped away under your touch Okay, let's hurry to Baxter's office. There's a whole rest of a wedding to plan for, right? Okay, we're back with Baxter. Hi. A new day and another visit to your new wedding planner came down the rushing river that was your life at this time. Mm. Chido, come here. Or don't come here, go play. <laughs> you and Cliff ba and Baxter were each shuttled into the same spots as at the appointment prior, but there wasn't any of that initial shock. Instead, Things started off with a simple greeting. Hey, we uh, have a wedding party now. Everyone we wanted accepted. Oh, you work faster than I do. Wonderful. I'll check it off and we can move fully forward. I hope you're excited. <laughs> yes. Cope stuttering, stutteringly giggled over the conversation. <laughs> Me too. Well, he pulled out his pen while crossing his legs in a fluid motion. Our company has its own in-house photographer for your event, so that's taken care of, but there's the meal catering, cake, and any other dessert you want. Oh my god, we have more planning to do? I want a cake. Baxter coyly grinned at the abrupt interruption, um, bothered. I'm sure they get your treat then, along with those are the outfits for you both, and you'll naturally need to decide where the ceremony and reception will be held. You're feeling, if you're feeling unprepared to make a call on any of that now, we could always start with the dance lessons. What are you feeling? Um, knowing where the wedding is going to be is pretty important to get done, but on the other hand, it's such a big thing, it's kind of intimidating to think about. Be careful, Cheeto. What is this all over your fur? Yeah, hop down. <laughs> Cove tilted his head back and forth, mentally working through his opinion on the matter. Baxter watched the struggle for a moment before bringing it back up. Mina, any thoughts for your to-be husband? <laughs> um... No, I want to pick the venue. I want to pick the venue. Baxter rubbed his hands together and grinned at you. All right, now we're getting serious. Cove gulped. Um. Can go out. Go. Go. No. Okay. Back up. All right. Sorry. Cove gulped his Adam's apple, briefly retreating up into his chin as if afraid, but he nodded his assent. Mina is right, we should decide this. His eyes met yours as he bobbed his head again. Let's do it. You sat up straight, your back tearing away from the comfort of the sofa's cushioning as you readied yourself for such a critical discussion in your wedding preparation. Here we go. Good, there are stunning buildings in the area which used to be private locations, but have since opened up specifically for wedding ceremonies for any couple who'd like to make use of them. Naturally, there are also plenty of commercial locations which can easily host a full-size after-party for your reception. Ooh, his mouth twitched into a sly smile. Or if you prefer something outdoors, there's always the beach. Yeah, I want the beach! I want it to be on the beach! He chuckled, fully aware of what an obvious suggestion that was for his current clients. You could go for a spot that can host both parts of the wedding, so it's entirely in one location, but there's no harm in making a little trip from the ceremony to the reception afterwards either. Either. Oh my god. It's entirely up to you. He held up a hand, stopping himself mid-flow, but, but continuing to smile warily. But I don't get 
but I don't wish to get carried away in a paramelade. Where would you like us to start? <sighs> oh my god. He leaned in, not planning on missing one word, the hand which he held in the air, not propping up his up his chin. Um, where will we head for maybe more options? Sure. He smiled, one side higher than the other with an well, actually, no, because we wanted to be on the beach. Where will it be held first? Yeah. He bit his lip before speaking again. His voice was soft and sweet, but a little sheepish. That's the one I'm most excited about, too. Gladly. He relaxed back into his rolling chair, then took out a phone with, a, with one hand while extracting his pen with the other. I've got photos of the places I mentioned to let you actually get a feel for the scene. Baxter tapped away on... At his screen, pulling up the previews of potential ceremony locations for your wedding. While he was partially preoccupied with that, he rattled off the specific kinds of locations you could choose. So there's a few spots I'd like to show you. There's a mansion that was formerly privately owned, as well as a church, mazik, or syna synagogue. <laughs> I said that completely wrong in the same vine. Then vine. Uh, there's the beach as always, or perhaps a different outdoor spot. Um, Cope's eyes darted over to Baxter and back to you as he spoke up tentatively. So we're allowed to mention our own ideas for places? What do you want? Okay, I guess, okay, I don't know why my door shut, whatever. Okay, so Baxter nodded Emma, Emily. Uh, certainly, what did you have in mind? Well, he was looking down at his shoes as he spoke. Taking a deep breath, he glanced over you. There's the poppy hill. No, I want it on the beach. I don't want to do it on that poppy hill. You grin sheepishly as you rub the back of your neck. With this starring role in your shared story, it made sense. Cope still flustered, return your, your oh my god, I can't talk. Return your awkward grin. He was clearly pleased to see that you'd been happy with his suggestion. He turned back to Baxter. I told you about it. It's where we got engaged, and he swallowed. It's and um, it's also where we first met. Oh, that's sweet. Oh my god. He tilted his head away and closed his eyes. Mm, I remember seeing it when I was there. Cope's gaze is fixed on Baxter with rapt attention awaiting his verdict. It's rather small and round. Cope deflated his shoulders sagging. Baxter opened his eyes again and continued. If you don't mind your guests having to stand, there's just not room for chairs. We could still set up a simple ceremony there. Cope chuckled as he straightened up in a seat. No, I want it on the beach. It could be worse. Uh, <laughs> I want it on the beach. I don't want to do it on the, on the poppy hill. The confidence had been restored to him. Having Baxter take his suggestion seriously and even offer ways to accommodate it had helped, co had helped put Cove at ease. Then he checked over to you. We don't have to do it there, though. Yes, please. If it's poppies you want, there is another option. Uh, I know of a bigger, flatter field of those flowers in the sense of bird area it would be spacious enough to have a full setup there no we're having on the beach sorry cup tilted his head as he peered at the phone genuinely intrigued by the news of another source of his favorite flower oh that's cool it did sound like it might be a quite a stunning location you began to considering the possibility good to hear no i want to do it on the beach cove then cope jolted in a seat his head snapping up as another idea came to him are people Oh my god, not the Redwood Forest. Oh my god. Are people allowed to have weddings or whatever in Redwood Forests? Even though it's kind of further away, that that's an amazing place to be in. He drew his feet in close to the sofa as he looked down, growing shy. We've made some special memories there. Baxter nodded surely. Is it not it is an option for certain spots. We could get it set up if you want. Cuff grinned delighted. No, I want the beach! Baxter spread his uh, his hands wide, holding the pen in his phone with his fingers so that you could see the palms of each hand. Those are the ideas, it sounds like. Tell me, what's standing out most for you? Um, actually, I already know the one I want. The beach. Cope's eyebrows rose in response to your statement. The beach? His wavy, eye, his wavy brows relaxed, sloping gently as he smiled softly. I would love that. It'd be perfect for the two of us. Your body tried to gra gasp and laugh in excitement at the same time, resulting in a short breathy snore followed by an exhilarated giggle. We're going to have a beach ceremony! Exciting. That's exciting. He smiled indulgently, like a teacher allowing the class for, 
loving the class a moment of levity before bringing them back to their studies. Before you get fully carried away, there's still the reception location to consider. Okay, what's the reception? Is that before or after? Baxter glanced down at his phone, nodding almost imperceptibly as he clicked away to get the information he needed. There's a couple of big halls you could consider. One which is frequently used for dances and another one for more formal events. There's also a large room in a historic mansion that got, oh my God, it could be the reception, the one, the same one that I mentioned before. Oh my God, the aquarium. Oh my God, a rather new option is actually the aquarium in the city over, which now has the bandwidth to host private events. Oh my God, we should do the aquarium. Cubs jaw dropping uttered a single word. Really? Really, it'll be in the main display room with the floor to ceiling tanks. Uh, his mouth continued to hang open, his face frozen. It, certainly, it was certainly a rare opportunity. You couldn't think of anyone who'd be excited by the option as Cove. As such, the news had temporarily stunned him. All at once, he blinked rapidly, closing his mouth in a hurry. Your attention returned to Baxter. The aquarium was certainly an option to keep in mind, but there were many other appealing choices to consider. Or if you want something outdoors, there's always the beach, of course. And even though you didn't want to use the redwood forest for your ceremony, it could also work for a reception, so you're welcome to keep it in mind as an option. Like before, if there's anything you want to bring up yourself, that's perfectly fine. In fact, I recommend it. Hmm. Oh my god, I can't talk. <laughs> he pursed his lips as he dug around his mind, pondering the possibilities as a thought struck him and shifted to face you. What about that country club your moms are a part of? Heck nah. No, no, no. He ha he snapped his fingers over and over, trying to dredge the name back up to his tongue. They have their anniversary dinner there. You know the one. He closed his eyes, brow furrowed deeply as he tried to recall it. You were torn on whether or not to bail him out. Before you come to a decision, Baxter caught on and filled in the blanks. Ah, uh, yes, the side press, I believe. You nodded. Baxter returned the gesture as Cove opened his eyes again, looking both relieved and like victory had swiped from underneath him. It's doable. They would absolutely be able to host your reception, especially since your family are already members. Cove beamed. It's cool if we go with one of the other things. I just thought it was an idea. I agree. It was a smart suggestion. I have no doubt that they'd do an excellent job if you chose them, but it's really what feels comfortable for you. Baxter leaned in, perching his chin on the knuckles of his left hand. He was still holding his pen and his phone ready to leap into action. What's the what's holding the most interest for you right now? We can talk it over. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, well, it's definitely not the country club or the dance hall or the historic club. Redwood Forest, it's and maybe the beach. I'm not sure since we're having our ceremony there. We should probably choose another place. I definitely want to do the aquarium, but it's like, will it be ugly in there? <laughs> I don't know. It's between the beach and the aquarium. Wait, I know the one I'm hoping for. The beach, the aquarium. I don't know. I don't know. Screw it. Just go with the aquarium. <laughs> Baxter held up a finger to indicate that he would be a moment. That was very nearly all it took as he was able to locate a picture of the, of the aquarium's large display room with ease. Yeah, I want that. Yep. He showed a screen to you in Cove. As he gazed at his beloved watery world, Cove bobbed his shoulders from side to side with his attention locked on the screen. You wondered if he was even aware he was doing it. It's such a pretty place. Finally, Cove pulled his gaze from the phone and glanced over his shoulder to you. You could tell that he was trying to figure out what you were thinking. Um, let's talk about another. The beach. Actually, I want to see all the places. You saw Baxter pause over his home for just a second. In that moment, you could read his mind. You and Cove knew every inch of the beach in far more detail than even the best photograph could capture. Okay, so it's going to be right here then. Oh my god, I can't wait. Oh my god. Still, <clears throat> for the sake of what must be his normal protocol, he pulled up a picture of the local shore for you and Cove to examine. Cove replied promptly. I love it. 
What? You tease Cove loving the beach? That's crazy. Cove glanced down to where Lazy scratched his cheek. You spent so many days there growing up in Sunset Bird, and so many of those were with me. It's definitely a place with history for us. Baxter smirked. If you went with this spot, it wouldn't be the first little part I've had with you on the shore. Oh, yeah. Cove smiled, Nas. Nas. Nostalgic. Oh, my God. Nostalgically. Oh, my God. I finally said it. As that memory came back to him, we got together with pretty much everyone and hung out all day that one summer. That was nice. It was. I'll always remember that day. Baxter smirked, mellowed into an easy smile as the diversion came to a close. No, I want to talk about another. We could do the country club. Oh my god, that's actually really pretty. Baxter brought up the website for the site press and presented the screen to the both of you. Though you've been there many times with your family over the years, you still appreciate him making the effort. Oh my god, I actually might go to the country club. Uh, having recent photos of it made it easier for you to eye it critically and consider what it would be like as a venue for your reception rather than relying on the, la on the cloudy lens of nostalgia. Cove hung, smiling sentimentally at the picture. We had our first date there. Honestly, I couldn't believe it when you asked me. He shifted his eyes away and repressed a shudder. I was so bad at everything. It's amazing that I didn't ruin my chance with you after that night. Um, I don't think anything, I don't think you could have managed anything to turn me away. Cove chuckled at the old memories. You sighed dreamily, remembering the night as clearly as clearly as if it had been yesterday rather than many years ago you could still picture cope's expression of determination as he worked his way through everything the buffet had to offer some things didn't change the conversation distracted you it was only when cove raised an eyebrow at you interested in your take on the cypress as the venue that you remember that there was a decision decision waiting to be made oh my god <sighs> We have to go with it. It looks so nice. Cove lifted an eyebrow thoughtfully. The country club for our reception? <laughs> You're the one who brought it up. His voice lit it at the end of as though he was asking a question, but he didn't seem to expect an answer. Rather, it was as though he was contemplating the feel of the words on his tongue, checking that they felt right as a final test. Cove broke into a grin. I think you're right. It would match with us for sure. You have been holding your breath as Cove mauled over the venue one last time. You let out a sigh of relief. You had already begun picturing the day of your reception here, and now that Cove confirmed that he felt the same, the tension drained out of you as swiftly as it had come. Your energy was mounting, with the venues picked, your idle daydreams of the big day moved from hazy imaginings to sharp clarity. Their energy raided off of you and, and, and onto Cove. Oh my god. He began to fidget in his seat, shuffling his feet as though if he couldn't bear to keep them in one place for more than a few moments, while threading his fingers together over and over in his lap. Sensing that his audience was becoming distracted, Baxter quickly spoke up. A ceremony at the beach and the reception at the country club after? Hmm. Looking thoughtful, Baxter tapped his pen against the side of his desk. Your eyes were drawn to the source of the noise. He tilted his head as if to tap it once more, the pen idly rolling between his finger and thumb, and then he smiled. Sounds like a wedding, I'll make it happen. Oh my god, yay! Cove spun to face you, his eyes elite with glee. You've got your wedding locations. You felt every thump in your heart beating in your chest. It was a thought so simple and yet so monumental that you were struggling to accept it all at once. You knew where your wedding was going to be. Aw, you leaned over to kiss Cove's cheek. Your lips lingered on his skin only for a moment, yet Cove was still flushed when you pulled away. The sudden display of affection had come by surprise. Thank you, Baxter. His expertise had helped you and Cove enormously. Cove chuckled at your words. Gazing into his eyes, you knew that all that he could think about was the day that you'd just taken another step towards planning. Reviewing the venue options had taken up the bulk of your allotted time with Baxter. He would now need to reach out to the location managers and make arrangements. So you came to the mutual agreement that you'd end it here and, and let him take care of, of matters right away. Goodbyes followed, then you and Cove giddily left the office and spilled out onto the street together. It was a great way to end the day's work. And that is where I'm going to leave today's episode, everyone. Oh my god. <laughs> 
My voice is killing me. I was trying to hold out for this video because I wanted you guys to see a lot of the DLC in my videos now. Like my previous one was like 48 minutes long, something like that. I've been trying to make them longer and stuff, just having them be like 20 minutes because I know a lot of you like this game and you don't like to wait like a day. <laughs> Trust me, I, I feel it too. I've I've watched shares before and then it's been like 15 minutes long. I'm like, oh my God, why could it have been longer? But yeah, everyone, I'm going to leave today's episode here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. But last year, Jeremy, thank you for watching. Wonderful day, everyone. Bye.